All right, so hopefully you've watched my initial review of the Racer 250. If not, I understand it's a pretty long video. I do ramble quite a bit in it. If you did go back and watch it, you know, good for you. Hopefully you got some information out of it. Something I always recommend is in that video is moving the VTX from the top of the quad into the back. That way you can use some different size batteries. And today, that's what we're going to look at. All right, so before we get started, let's get some general safety tips going on here. Number one, typically I always try to leave the antenna on the VTX. The reason being is you don't want to power on your quad without an antenna on the VTX. It will burn it out. So as just kind of a habit, I always try to leave the antenna on unless there's an absolute reason I have to remove it. For this, we will. So let me go ahead and take this off. Second thing is when working on your quad, always remove the props. So just a safety precaution. What I can tell you is I've never had a quad fly away all crazy like from me working on it and not removing the props. What I can tell you is that there's been a couple cases that if I had not removed the props, it would have. It would have flown in my face, would have crashed into my ceiling, it would have killed my cat, something, yada, yada, yada. So anytime you're working on your, your quad, definitely re recommended that you remove the props. All right, now for this mod, we don't actually have to take off the arms. What we can get away with is just taking off the top plate. And to do that, what you're going to do is remove the top two screws that connect the top plate to each arm, as well as these two screws that connect the top plate to the front face plate. So as we take this off, there's going to be the, some wires that connect the VTX to the PDB in the camera. So be careful not to just rip it off. Just kind of gently fold it over and go ahead and disconnect both those wires. Preferably you wouldn't pull them by the wires, but as long as you're gentle enough with it, it shouldn't be a big ordeal. Again with your receiver wires, kind of gently work those out as well. That way you don't tear them. The length of those wires is actually important. So you don't want to go damaging them and running them at different lengths. In between the carbon fiber top plate and the arms are little carbon fiber spacers. Just set those aside for now. You do not want to lose them. They are important for the way that it sits on them. All right, now that we got that off, the only thing that holds the VTX on the top right here is the actual antenna mount. Not the best design, Probably be nice to use some screws in there. Oh, you know, actually, I think there is some screws in there normally. Oh yeah, there is normally two standoff screws in here. However, I forgot to put those on when I reassembled this. So take the top nut off here. And then in most cases, remove those two screws as well. It is nice if you cannot take off that bracket and do that, but if you have to, you have to. It'll just be a pain in the butt to put back on. Also, considering this bracket, if you haven't seen my tip already, I would actually zip tie each one of those four corners to that now while you have this up and not on it have anything around it because this thing likes to fly off all the time. And let's just say that I don't have either one of my two original ones and this is a replacement that I bought just so I could show you this trick right here, which is just putting zip ties. Ooh, that one's a little tight. Just putting zip ties through the uh, vibration dampening balls. Do not tighten them all the way. You're not trying to defeat the purpose of those vibration dampening balls. You just want them to basically hold the mount there as a last resort, so. All that good so yeah do that 
It's easier to do it now than when it's actually on the quad, to be honest. So I would just recommend doing it now. All right, now that we have the VTX off, it's like I said, you can leave the arms on here. Do be careful. You will be kind of bending the PDV if you mess with those arms a whole lot. So try not to stress it too much during the process. Now what you need to do is you need to take the two wires, the wire that goes from the camera to the VTX, as well as your power wire, and extend them to where they will reach all the way to the back if that's where you want to put your VTX. And it's where I would recommend putting your VTX as well. So this one is already done because this is not my first time working on the Racer 250. I like to route this wire just underneath the flight controller. It keeps it pretty well centered and out of the way of everything. And now your power wire, you could do one of two things. Either you could take your power wire and you can extend it to where it reaches in the back as well. Or what I did in one case is I actually took my power wire, I think because I broke that jack on this board, yeah, that jack's completely broken off, and I actually soldered it to the bottom two connectors that were where the LiPo went directly in. The power for this VTX actually has to be connected directly to the LiPo. That's the only way that the built-in OSD will actually send you the correct voltage to the FPV view. Something else I like to do to VTXs is I always like to put a heat sink on them. I just feel it extends their life, increases their durability. So there will be a link in the description below to VT or uh, heat sinks like this. And so just go ahead and do something like that. Now, as far as mounting it in the back, I just do a real quick and dirty solution. It's nothing super elegant, but it works for me. And basically, what it is, is I use this 3M double-sided foam adhesive tape. Reason is, is because the foam helps to reduce vibration. Now, if you are working on top of carbon fiber, carbon fiber is conductive. So you have to be really careful about how you put electronics on there. Uh, the PDB, the top surface, is not necessarily conductive so long as you haven't scratched off anything going to the ground plane or anything like that so you typically don't have to worry about it and that is it i will use one layer just kind of set it on there cut it to length expose it and then set her down and then what i will also do is put a zip tie around it making sure that i'm putting pressure on the heat sink only you don't really want to have pressure on these two capacitors because you'll just risk ripping them right off of the board. So let me try and get that pretty well centered. Boom. Now let me get another zip tie here. Go underneath the PDB. Like so. And then I want to try to nail it right over the heat sink. That way most of the force is being exerted on the heat sink only. Alright, so once that's mounted in the back, and once you have your power wire either extended from the jack and your camera wire extended from the jack, or rerouted or however you would like to do it, all that's left is reassembly. So go ahead and what I like to do is to, I'm going to plug this in. Oh, I'm not going to do a power wire. Reason is, this is broken. So one of my next videos is going to be showing how to install a 12 volt BEC, that way you can run a different VTX. Because the replacement VTXs that are specific to the Racer 250 are pretty damn expensive. They're $25. So, yeah, sorry. Not, not willing to spend that on this. Um, I understand if you are, always personal choice. However, I'm not. I'm just gonna run a different VTX and show you how to install it. So. Now that everything is put back together, 
we put the top plate back on. However, you need to remember these carbon fiber spacers. They go in between the arms and the top plate. What I like to do is I like to start off with getting the camera set up like so, making sure it's in its groove. If you're curious, basically this is gonna be your top and the, there's gonna be a plug at the bottom that's not used. That goes against the PDB, like so. So get that situated in there correctly. And then I normally hold that camera from the front. That way it's not moving all around. Oh, come on you silly bastard. Get in your groove. There we go. A little bit better. All right, so once that's situated in the groove, I typically hold it with the finger and then I take the top plate and I line it up in the front face to where the screws are there and then I press that part of the camera through the groove like so boom and then once that's in there I typically start off with the two front screws which are going to be the shorter screws out of the top set I'll get one of the top carbon fiber spacers and then I'll take one of the screws and I'll work it through the top plate through the spacer and then into come on you can do it you can do it Boom. and then into the arm where it goes but what I won't do is I won't tighten it all the way because those spacers have a tendency to move so once it's threaded I'll make sure the spacers is in the correct place and then I'll thread the second screw through, making sure that it is aligned correctly and going into the threads on the arm correctly. And then go ahead and tighten that one and come back and tighten the first screw. And then I just know it's done correctly. I'm not crapping around with a bunch of spacers all day. It has happened. It has happened. Sometimes you teach yourself tricks as you go. Boom, done. Do that with all four arms. All right, and there you go. Something that I like to do is I like to take the um, lock ring and the nut and just put them back on that. SMA post just so I know they're there if they ever want to put this back for some reason or use it for something else for some reason Then I know I could just take them off here But they don't have to be here if you want to toss them in something else Consider it a weight loss mod a whole point five of a gram and Then now you could reroute your antenna wires as well It's a little funny to get used to but I like to poke them up through that hole that's in the middle of the, the arm and the spacer. <laughs> Almost the same thing. All right. And then, it's like I said, I try to keep an antenna on there at all times, so I will put that back on. What I do like about this is that it's going to be very hard to actually directly hit that connector now. Typically, your antenna is going to flex no matter what way it lands, and so it should actually help the durability a bit. Then you can take your strap. Get that situated. And now... You are ready to run your batteries on top without worrying about knocking around your VTX. Strap is actually a little small or a little large for this. Ooh, the strap is actually really large for this. All right, I'll have to find a different strap then. It doesn't even fit. You're ready to run two batteries. Boom. Looking for that 6S, there you go. Ishin 250, not 6S cable. 
So yeah, that's the basic of moving the VTX. It's pretty simple. You just gotta extend those wires, get it off, put it back in the back, secure your vibration camera mount while you're at it, epoxy your capacitors on your PDB, things like that. If you're looking for an alternate place to run it, those solder joints work just fine. Do, I would not put it on the ESC pads because then you are bypassing the capacitor and you will get feedback back from the ESC. So yes, that is that. And on to the next one. And don't forget about our February giveaway. Or if it's not February, we always have a giveaway every month. Check in the description below. As well as check out our Facebook groups. Definitely helpful when it comes to Ishin quads and quad toppers in general. Links in the description below. As well as links to the heat sinks that I used on here. And I think that's the only product that is in this video. Yes. Throw a link to the replacement Ishin 250 VTX as well, just in case you need one. Check the description below. With that, my name is Lazy PC. You guys have a good day.